I'm John Browner. That bro, that's Bert Grossman, the legend. He hates Recognize. when I do that. He hates Recognize. when I do that. Someone who wishes he was as good as Chase Young. But that's, <laughs> not, that's not even something we're going to dwell into because Chase Young is in a playoffs. You ever make the playoffs, Bert? One time. And, you ever and get, I, man, they six and ten and made the playoffs. That don't count. You ever get a coach fired? Uh, Maybe. Because that's what we're going to talk about on today's show. This is the Brown and Burt podcast. This is the episode. I don't know. Again, I lost count. It's the new year. This is the first one of the new year. So let's get down to business because it happened. The back and forth, back and forth, the rumors is no more. Anthony Lynn is done along with the Jets head coach. The Texans head coach was already out. The uh, Jacksonville head coach is out. The, tie, the, the Texans head coach is out. Uh, I, there's another one I can't remember right now, but. Bron- the Broncos, Atlanta. Coach- Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta. The Broncos coach may be out as well. That's a still wait and see situation. But I gotta tell you this: all those firings are they're not important. Only one firing is important on this show, and that's the firing of one Anthony Lynn. Whether it be justified or not, they cut that brother loose, but they let him walk out the door with a seven million dollar check. Now we're on the show today, I want to talk about: is was that the right decision? And if it was the right decision. Who are you going to get to replace him? So, but let's start at the beginning. Bert, what did you think of the fire and fresh back from Miami? You know, I actually, as I said before, I thought they were going to keep him, but um, I was kind of shocked. I guess, you know, not not to dwell on anything, but you can't, in L.A., I guess Spanos finally figured out, you can't just keep people a year longer, year longer, just save money on the contracts. They don't go for that in L.A. There's too much competition. So, Somebody got in his ear and told him that. I think the most shocking thing to me is I saw he has Jason Garrett on it <laughs> on his interview. Did you see that? What do you got against Jason Garrett? See, this is the thing. Man, come let's, on. Ain't nobody else interviewing him. Let's say, okay, let's ask a question. Because you're interviewing someone, does mm-hmm. it mean you're going to hire them, one? And two, I don't want to hear about anybody until you reach the second interview. Because nobody's getting hired after one interview for a head coaching job for, for an NFL franchise. I just don't see that happening. So they still got to interview Eric, Eric uh, Bannamy, the offensive coordinator from the Chiefs. They still have to interview the defensive coordinator for uh, Robert Sala. I think that's his last name or his first name, either one, from the 49ers, who I actually think is really the quiet hire through all of this. But there's still guys to go. What's wrong with Jason Garrett being first? Jason Garrett is everything that the Chargers are looking for in a head coach. He's coached already. He sucks. He doesn't have never been to the playoffs. He, he doesn't he, have a winning record. Uh, He's Mike McCoy. He's North Turner. Come on, man. See, look, Come man, on. This, look, if you even put him on your list, you're saying it. You're saying I'm still the same old Chargers. You know, when Dean says I'm going to be involved, first thing they do is we're going to hire, we're going to interview Jason Garrett. Oh, that yeah, that's your foot stamp right there. You, if, you, you, yeah, Jason Garrett. If you dig into the numbers, Jason Garrett is over 500 as an NFL head coach. Oh, and and that's why I want to hire. That's and he's, why I want to hire for and he's two And he's two and three in the playoffs. The splash – the splash is Jason. The splash for this organization, okay? The splash for this organization is Jason Garrett. I want it to be Urban Meyer. I don't want it to be Eric Bahenemy because I don't. I, they don't need another guy who's never been a head coach before. That's my yeah, thing. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, and if I was hiring, it would be. And, and they even said they're looking for a CEO type to basically run the team because the Spanoses can't. And obviously, Telesco is not that great either at hiring coaches. So they want somebody. To, to come run it. So again, I mean, if it was me, it'd be Matt Campbell at, at Iowa state. I mean, they need a guy that's a proven winner, a guy that's managed games, a guy that doesn't win. See my problem with like urban Meyer or Dabo or, or Nick Saban is college is recruiting. I mean, you, you have, <laughs> I mean, Alabama has so much talent and it's True. not, that's True. what makes Saban a great coach is recruiting structure, discipline or discipline, their talent, everything. You can't do that in the NFL because these are grown men and you're not allowed to recruit, basically. Um, so it, it's a whole different thing. I don't think you, you look at somebody like the guy at Iowa State, um, Matt Campbell, and it's like he's never get top 50 recruiting class, yet he's out there, you know, turned the worst team in the country around and, and has stayed that way. So somebody like that is somebody like Bobby Ross to me. You know, Bobby Ross came from Georgia Tech, which wasn't, a you know, a powerhouse in recruiting, but still was able – to go to the national championship. And if you can get to that level with, with, you know, bottom 50 in the nation recruiting rankings, then you're a pretty good coach. They can't hire him. I'm sorry. I never heard of this guy. He's probably a <laughs> Come fantastic on, man. Head coach. He's probably a fantastic head coach. 
I don't want to disrespect or disparage this man and his coaching career because that's just someone's life's work. You would have wait. First of all, you would have heard him if you weren't on James Harden's jock all the time. Stop watching him and watch this man, Matt Campbell, Iowa State, guaranteed. Let me repeat that one more time. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you gotta hire him. you got you you are in Los Angeles, okay? Mm -hmm. Home of the Lakers, world champions, home of the Dodgers, world champions, home of the Los Angeles Rams, who are in the playoffs again, while you are not. So if you're going to you forgot USC, UCLA, basketball. I mean, the Clippers. I mean, come on, man. There's so I, much. Yeah. I'm only mentioning teams that are winning trophies. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are teams who have won trophies or been to the Super Bowl. So these are the people you're competing with up front. Now, can you outdo the Clippers and get some headlines? Maybe. Can you outdo the Angels and get some headlines? Maybe. The Kings? Maybe. USC? Probably not. UCLA? Probably. So you're in a headline battle tw 12 months out of the year. This isn't like, a, oh, we're going to win this week and then we're good because football season is about to be over for us. No, you got to win the headlines all year round to stay front of mind in Los Angeles. To do that, you have hey, to – Let me ask you one thing, though. Do you think they have to win headlines, but does that still bring people to the stadium? I mean – Yes. I mean, yes. The, the four or five or six organizations you're talking about have been winning headlines for 50 years. And you're just going to walk in. I mean, they have but Justin Herbert. Granted, I mean, he he's their key to, to Los Angeles right now. But what they do around him and develop is – shockingly and this is what i'm scared of is what they did with drew Brees and what they did with philip rivers and now it's good i mean those three guys are talent level wiser and you know you might say justin ember's going to be end up better than all of them but they're right. all all of fame quarterbacks and none of them have been able to win here this is why you have to go big with your hire and i know jason garrett's not big so i'm, I'm that's who they interview this is the person i'm telling you who i think they should hire this is why i think they should hire urban meyer you may not, you may disapprove of the way that he has won with the best players. And I get yeah. that and I understand that. But one of the things that Urban Meyer has done, he won at Youngstown State. He won at Utah when no one had ever won at those two spots. He won at Florida when Florida was kind of wishy washy at that point. He turned Florida into a thing, turned mm -hmm. Utah into a thing, won at Youngstown State, went to Ohio State and done the same thing. So, what this tells me about Urban Meyer is that he can build a staff and that he can allow that staff to do their thing. That's what the Chargers need. They need a guy who can who knows what he wants. The learning on the job at this point, it's over with. It's over. Here's so you, my problem. Here's my problem with Urban Meyer. And this is why I would say a bigger splash and a better splash should be Jim Harbaugh because he's had – Also also a yeah. great choice. Also and, a great choice. And he played here, and he's, you know, been around. Um He's had success in the NFL. My problem with Urban Meyer is everywhere he's gone. I mean, you have this generational talent right now, quarterback. Um, right. And Urban Meyer has been in Florida, Youngstown State, Utah, and Ohio State. And they've all had donkey-ass quarterbacks. Tebow to um, Cardell Jones to True. I don't know, not Haskins. But, I mean, th those those programs, the way they run their offense, they don't develop pro quarterbacks no matter how – how great the talent is of the guy. They just don't develop them and they and they come in four or five years behind in the pros all the time. But you're missing the but you're missing the fact that he had the number one pick in Alex Smith as well. Okay. Okay. So again. But wait, but again, but how again, I'm gonna go on that one. Cause you take Alex Smith and he was the number one pick, but yes. it took him four or five years to catch up to actually be a good quarterback. And then I mean he was he was gonna be a bust. He was like Jared Goff, he was a bust. Then you get Harbaugh that comes in there and actually teaches them the fundamentals and catches them up from the four or five years that he missed at Utah because they weren't developing quarterbacks for pro offense. And then he became good. If, I mean, he became good and, 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 you know, he saved Harbaugh and Harbaugh saved him pretty much. If you're going to tell me that you want to hire Jim Harbaugh, I'm not going to argue that because I think that's a great hire as well. Yeah. He fits the criteria of what a guy, a guy who can run the system, the, the, the organization from the top down, a guy yeah. who's going to command what he wants before he comes in the door so there are no surprises. I, I'm i fine with that. But Jim Harbaugh hasn't even won at Michigan. Like He's done nothing of significance at Michigan. The only time he ever did anything of significance at the college game was USD, and we all, we're not going to no, Stanford USD. Stanford. What did he win at Stanford? What did he win? Stanford was a was a bottom ranked team and he brought him back to relevancy. He brought him in the top five for God's sakes. That's how I, he got the 49er job. We, but 
we want winners now, man. We, yeah, but here's again. the problem. So I agree with you at Michigan, but here's the problem that you don't have to face in the NFL is you can't – Michigan is never going to beat Ohio State in recruiting in, in any time in the foreseeable future. So you're right, but he's losing to other teams, Michigan State and other things. Yes, thank you. The downfall is the talent level. I don't think it's actually what he's doing. So you say his weakness, because he never had great recruits at Stanford or USD or anywhere else. His downfall might be recruiting because he's a goofy ass dude. Right. Um, and, and young kids don't connect with him. You know, 18, 19 year olds. I don't know if anybody connects with him because he's goofy. But but the problem is you go to the pros and they're all adults. And I think he has a better, a better, you know, uh, relationship. Connection. That way. Yeah, connection, but, relationship. But, and they're used to goofy people. But here's the thing. If, if, it, if you're looking at Harbaugh, yes, he's weird. Really yes, he has, yes, he has trouble recruiting. But to me, this is why. You would too if that weirdo walked in. You, I mean, come on, you nineteen year old, um, and and you, you're getting recruited, and Michigan walks in with his weird ass, with his Dockers on up by the top, and then these other coaches come in that are cool with these programs you're watching on TV. You're not going to go there, and he can never get over the part that he's not personable. This is why I would rather have Urban Meyer, because Urban Meyer is all those things. But it's cleaner cut. The only knock against Urban Meyer, and and, and I'm perfectly okay cleaner with this. Cleaner cut. Come this, on, Urban Meyer. Hold, hold on, hold let me. Hold on. He run let out me. of air right before the NCAA come down. He run out of town and, and fake heart attack like Fred Sanford. And let it's me the get big to, one. And let me get to that. Let me get to that, because that's that's the only knock against him. That's a big that, knock. That will not happen in the NFL. I you don't see him being like that. like when Saban went to the NFL and lasted about ten games and realized he couldn't recruit and. He was, you know, talent level so much higher than everybody else. You, you know what? He, he, Nick, he balked out. Nick Saban would still be coach coaching the Dolphins. Oh, if he, God. Listen to – hear me out. All right. If, if he would assign Drew Brees, he would still be coaching the Dolphins because Drew Brees would still be playing for the Dolphins. The reason why – They got this, Dante Culpepper, though. And look – and now he coaching the Alabama Crimson Tide. Is he? No, not Dante Culpepper, but Nick Saban, fool. Oh, but that's who he, but Nick Saban took Dante Culpepper over uh, Drew Brees. And that was the mistake. If you take, if, if, if Urban Meyer takes the Charger job, you start with something that a lot of these guys do not start with. You start with a quarterback who is top, who's the best young quarterback in the game and is a top 10 quarterback in the league. N Nick Saban I think top five quarterback in the league right now. Right, Nick Saban I mean, if you, didn't start if you with take that. Away, I mean, seriously, if you take away Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees here and there, Brady, if you take away it's Aaron Rodgers, Mahomes, Mahomes. Brady, and then you could say that Justin Herbert's up there with anybody without without a mini camp, without a training camp, without getting the first team reps, without anything, without Russell Wilson. Who knows what Pete Carroll is because he was struggling. You go. Well, here's start the other problem. So what's going to be a bigger deal for for? Miami, you think going forward because they're still haunted by taking Culpepper over Breeze. You think it's going to be the same way that they took Tua over Herbert? One thousand percent. One thousand percent. Yeah, I think I think they're Two. just going to be like I, they might even take quarterback with Houston's pick at they're number going, three next year. Look, they're going to because people in that building put him on the field for a reason. He's too small. He gets hurt too quickly, and then you look over and you see Justin Herbert looking like a legend. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow, but you turn on the tape and Joe Burrow was a good player. He's, he's Drew Brees. Yeah, he's Drew right. Brees, basically. So now we got to throw our guy in because if he's not as good as these two, we have a problem and we need to know now. And now, you know, now we need to take another guy. So, yes, I yeah, I think Miami's in trouble again. And that's why the Charger job is the best job out there. You don't. Well, oh, I to... agree. It's the best job out there. They're, they're again. We talked about this all year, and that's why Lynn was just absolutely had to get fired. I don't care whether had he to. Beat, he had he beat to go. Kansas City's third team or not. He's the Chargers are you arguably a top five if, and definitely a top seven talent yes. roster in the NFL. You cannot finish six and eighteen every year, whatever you do. So you're right, but there is all the other openings have donkey rosters. This one is win right away with roster. And the only two ones that have good quarterbacks have no cap. The, yeah, and we the, have a ton, and Chargers have a ton of cap, which they probably won't use, but they still have a ton of cap. The Houston Texans have no cap and no picks. They and, have the, and, and, the Hulk, and the Hulk, the Falcons have no, and I mean zero cap space, 
and you stuck with Matt Ryan, whether you like that or not. So we've seen the landscape. That's why I think they're going to get the best coach on the market. Now, I think that's Urban Meyer. It depends on what they think about that in the building. And if he wants $12 million, I also think it's not going to be him. Because that's no, no, that ain't never going to be him yet. They ain't, they're, that's, that's like more than John Gruden. They're not paying $12 million. That's no. why I think somebody like Jason Garrett will fit with them because Dude, he's, he's in the seven to nine range of money, million forget, dollar range. Forget about Urban Meyer. If you're willing to spend $12 million and you got Justin <laughs> Herbert, you can get freaking Belichick for $12 million. Probably, I, I think he makes about that already. So Yeah, uh, and he and he don't want to rebuild there. Why not come here and you already rebuilt? You got the quarterback. It, but if you're asking, listen, we're talking about what the Spanos might actually do. So what I'm saying, saying, they're never even in that price range. Yeah, I, you and I want a Bentley, but they're still going to buy a, a Celica. That's what wow. they do. Why are you pooping on Celica? That's an affordable vehicle, man. That's a family Exactly, car. and that's what they buy. They buy the affordable stuff. You're right. But but you're saying just because they're available, the, I got a lot of cars available. And my lease is up. Let me go to the Bentley and the Lamborghini store. I can look and interview all I want. And the Chargers are going to run that credit check. It's going to come back at five ninety, and they'll be like, over there. I got to use Honda Civic, and that's going to be um, Jason Garrett. You can have him at your five ninety credit score. <laughs> this is, dude, this, I, I, I've said this in the beginning. I've said this in the middle. I'm going to say this again. I think they're going to hire someone high profile who no one ever thought that this organization would do, because one, it's going to be easier to convince that person even with the, the BS that happens in an organization, because the kid you have at quarterback. I think people are downplaying that entirely too much, and you get to wake up in Los Angeles. Waking yeah. up in Ohio and going to work is a lot different than waking up in Los Angeles and going to work. And if you can turn this thing around, if you can make them viable in that market, you are a football god if you're Urban Meyer because you've done it in two huge college football places and now you turn LA and the Chargers of all teams into yeah, the, the talk yeah. of the into the talk of the NFL by winning and being front of mind because Urban Meyer got hired there. Come on, man, this is but a you no brainer. I mean, the Chargers went twelve and four in in the soccer stadium, so winning's not really a thing, and they still couldn't fill a twenty five thousand seat stadium. So I'm not really sure. But you're right because they had a coach that had no thank you or whatever you want to call it. Thank you. Yeah, you that's kind of old as shit. Right? You are old as shit. You hire a guy who has name recognition, and off you go. The rest of it, listen, he's going to charm most of the media because that's, that's Urban Meyer, okay? You hire Jim Harbaugh, holy shit, that's Jim Harbaugh. So those yeah. two guys are going to charm the media for about a good year if they're not good. Yeah, yeah, they got, they have a two, they probably have a two, three year cushion even if they're not good. If you bring in, if, used to that. if you bring in Jason Garrett, he's gonna have about eight weeks of the same thing. Yeah, you bring, you bring in one of these offensive coordinators, they're not gonna have that. There's no fire to any offensive coordinator you could bring in here that would have people talking about them in the headlines. The only way to do that is Jason Garrett. There will be negative headlines, but there'll be headlines. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh will be headlines positive and negative because he's weird, and Urban yeah. Meyer will be headlines because it's big time high level blockbuster name that you've hired and everybody wanted him. But you again, know, at 12 million, they're not paying that. They're not. So he's not even on the list. What, it, what again, if it, dude, you can go get Belichick for 12 million. Why well, I want urban Meyer for what I mean, if, you can get anybody for 12 million. Pretty much. What if they do though? Oh, come on, man. Come on. Seriously. This is the same people who didn't see them fire Anthony Lynn. Look, I, look, 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 no, but these are the same people that hired Mike McCoy and Anthony Lynn. They hired a position coach to take their team to LA. You're right. <laughs> You're 100 percent correct. Well, let me ask you this question. So this is who makes sense. Well, let, but let, me, let me say let me say this first. Let me say this first. Let me say this first. I think that this organization realizes the moment that they're now in, where you are in a market where you have a fair shot to be the number one team in the second largest media market in the world, and you have to do something you've never done before, and that's pay somebody. I think they get that for once, for once. I think they're going to do this one time. And if it doesn't work, they will never do it again. You're but I sell think, the team. Yes, yes. Well, tell me why this doesn't make sense to you. Because by the and, way, I think that's what this is all about. So tell me why this doesn't make sense to you then. The hottest name is Eric Bieniemy. Yes. Eric Bieniemy is from L.A. Eric Bieniemy yes. played for the Chargers. Yes. Why isn't? Why aren't we talking about Eric Bieniemy? Because you cannot hire another guy who hasn't been a head coach. 
because there's going to be a learning curve. And you, 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 after the guys you just had, you just can't do it. I, Eric B. Henry doesn't ring bells in Los Angeles. It just doesn't. Like you said, they were 12 and four in the first year. Yeah. They couldn't even draw fans at the state at a soccer stadium at yeah. 12 and four with people who you knew, like Philip Rivers and, and Melvin Gordon. Like they had all, uh, uh, Joey Boza, Joey, but they Allen. had. They had Keenan. They had guys who you could recognize. Yeah. Guys who you could put in a commercial. Yeah. Joey Joey Bosa is a pitch man, big, strong, white. Whoa! They, could, they couldn't draw <laughs> Young people. Young Bert Grossman. You feel me? Young Bert <laughs> in the flesh, baby. They couldn't draw nobody in a no. in a soccer stadium. No. So I'm telling you, this has to be approached from a PR standpoint. Yes, football is important, and football should be first. But you've seen at 12 and four, it ain't everything. So if you hire Urban Meyer, he takes care of everything. It's hardball. That's the one, not Urban Meyer. Urban or, Meyer, or Urban Meyer has, can't develop, got a can't develop quarterbacks, can't develop quarterbacks, and only been a college coach. I'm okay. saying hardball, and then he'll bring Kaepernick back. Okay, I don't, I don't have a problem with any of that. I don't have Nobody a problem. Nobody want Kaepernick. He worse than Cam Newton. I don't have a problem if it's hardball. That's what I'm saying, not Cam Newton uh, or uh, Kaepernick. I don't have a problem if. It's Harbaugh. I have a gigantic problem if it's one of these offensive coordinators, like they, the guy who there's a uh, Buffalo's offensive yeah. coordinator, Brian Dabble. Wh- who? What? <laughs> yeah. Huh? At least people know Eric Benemy, and that's a black guy. So you bring a black guy in LA from LA. That's going to be okay. But for you're a right. I mean, weeks. we know it in the football world, but LA is a little different. They don't, you could go around LA. They don't know who Eric Benemy is. And but you're out of the whole list. They know Harbaugh and Urban yes. Meyer. That's it. So we're going to say those are the two hires that they should be, that they should be looking into. The question is, will they? It'll do be because- Jason Garrett. So that means it'll be Jason Garrett. Because I think it'll be Jason Garrett too. Because that's the logical thing that they. That's logically what, according to what this franchise's history is, Jason Garrett is the target and will be the guy who gets the job. They want the quiet guy that agrees with everything that the Spanos and the two boys say and Telesco, and they all work together and they're all yep. in a drum circle and yep. they're all mediocre. That's what they want. They've had two guys that three guys that have been that way. Coriel, which the old man fired Marty Schottenheimer, um, which they fired after 14 2 well-documented and Bobby Ross, you know, after taking him to the Super Bowl and, and, and making him relevant again, because he wouldn't, you know, cow tail down to the Spanos. So I mean, maybe it's been long enough they forgot about that, and they're gonna try it again. <laughs> but, but you know, but you know who will do that? Hmm. Jason Garrett, because exactly. he just got through doing it for a decade with Jerry Jones. Yeah, he's got experience in ego massaging the owner. Like yeah. he, he, that's why he's perfect for this job. Yes, no, I want. That. If it's Jason Garrett, I'm stop. I quit. That's why I want. I'm gonna quit everything. I want Urban Meyer. I want Jim Harbaugh. But what you're probably going to get is somebody in the middle of that road, a guy who's been a head coach and a guy who knows how to handle these owners when they come down from the box. Let's reframe that. You want Kaplan and crew five days a week. You don't want those two teams because then they'll be good. There's nothing to talk about. You want Jason Garrett. So you got two, three years of good material. First of all, I've already come out in the new year and said, I'm driving a charger bus next year. I'm Are driving you? A, I'm driving a fan bus next year. I am I am Bolt Central at the Kaplan and Crew show. I'm Bolt Whoa, what, Central. How'd that happen? I look I looked into the crystal ball, man. I see it coming. I see Justin Herbert. I see a big time, big time coaching hire here. Hey, you know what you need to do? I'm gonna tell you right now. Talk you to need, me. You need to get your bong out, right? On on mm-hmm. the next Kaplan and Crew, and then tear up your Charger Hater Club and smoke it right in front of them. Well, I didn't have one. I never had one. Well, you got no people don't know that, man. Just go with it, Bukaki. Well, listen, listen, listen. What's most important here? Basiak. They have they have an ally. They have an ally now on the show. Oh, okay, okay. 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 I'm in the I'm in the Chargers corner. Okay. Wink, wink, Dean. Wink, wink. It send them checks through my pseudonym. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I despise the Spanos as that organization. We everything that. as as as. But you know, it's not just me. It's every ex player. It's not. I mean, you can't find one ex player except like you know Hardwick or. Or Sean Merriman, or ass kissers, or LT. I mean, yeah, you could find some ass kissers that like them because they're getting paid. So they, I don't blame them. I pretend to. But Justin Herbert's like Philip Rivers. The only thing I would watch, you know, the Chargers or root for the Chargers because I loved Philip Rivers and he could transcend you hating the organization 
because you like them as a player, whether you did or not. But Herbert's the same way. So even people that hate the Chargers, Herbert has the ability to take the stink off the Spanoses. That's the that's the beauty in what Philip Rivers did for them, and they yeah. just got pure luck. And that's going to be the beauty of this kid for the next ten to fifteen years. And ultimately, you, I you know we bring this up a thousand times, but ultimately, I think the biggest thing that should have got Lynn fired, you know, whether they underachieved and and his clock mismanagement and everything else, if you're a head coach and you're seeing this generational talent come in, you didn't even see it, you didn't recognize it, you had him on the bench, you weren't giving him reps. You didn't start him. You didn't even after he tore up the Nothing. first game. You didn't Nothing. want to. Nothing. I mean, that alone should be like you are not a head coach. If you if you miss that, you are not a head coach. So I I, I don't think he'll. I think he's going to be a great college coach. I honestly do. I don't think he'll be a power five coach, but I think he'll go to somewhere like Colorado or I mean that's power five or Houston or one of these uh, middle Ooh, Tennessee. Anthony Lynn? Yeah, is yeah. what running back coach? No, as a head coach, I think because I, I mind. you want bet. I think he's a good leader. I think he's poor on execution, which you can fix in a college game because if you get more good players than the other You're probably right. He'd probably be a good recruiter too. Yes, he'll be a great recruiter because he's a good talker. So I think he's going to be a great college coach, head coach. I don't think he'll be a good – I don't think he'll ever be an NFL head coach again. Oh, he's not even going to be a coordinator. And He's going to – see, I'll go out on a limb and say he he might sit out because he's getting a $7 million check. He better. He's going to be a special teams coordinator as bad as they were, or he's going to be a running back coach again. That's what he's meant to be. No offense. I mean, in the NFL, he's going to be those. Things. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. He could be like, um, who's due to Arizona state. Oh, Herm, Herm Edwards, Herm Edwards. I mean, you know, Herm's great. Same thing. Great leader, you know, kids yep. connect with him. Same kind of guy is Anthony Lennon. You know, Herm Edwards don't do shit as far as game management preparation. Cause he's smart enough to say, I'm the CEO of this team and I'm going to hire people to do that. So we look good. And that's part of it. You have to put your ego aside and say, this is not what I'm good at. I'm going to do what I'm good at, and I'm going to hire people to do what I'm not good at. That's why you can't have any more coordinators. <laughs> That's why whoever takes this job. Coordinator, we hired a position coach. We didn't even get a coordinator last time. That's, that's unheard of in the NFL. Let's Give me one other NFL team in modern history that's ever hired a position coach that just got fired from his position coach position. Listen. At Buffalo. For, for first time for everything. So now you're going to hire another guy from Buffalo? No, here it goes. Oh, oh, you were the running back coach at Buffalo and you got fired and they didn't retain you. I got Come a head in. coaching job for you Come in LA. In. Come on in. Come on Great in. Interview. Get, this, get this check. Yeah. So, so who does that? So l- listen, we, we've belabored that point. Uh at this so which job do you think will get filled first, though? You think it'll be the Chargers, Jets, uh, Falcons, Texans, um, Jacksonville? I don't, you know, you get like the Jets. I mean, here's the problem. So we talk, Eric Bannum is going to get one job, but, you know, the knock on him, and I love Eric, is in, you know, the knock on him, whether it's true or not, is that he just relays the plays and, and um, what's his name? Andy Reid calls the plays. Works for Matt Nagy. He's had a little, he's had a little, um, what would I call it? Oh. Pass run-ins with the law when he was younger. And the fact is they say he's not good at the interviews, but you, you know, I mean, are you hiring a guy that's good at football? Or are you hiring a guy that's good at interviews? Because on Sunday, I don't see anybody sitting down and interviewing. So that really shouldn't matter. But I don't think the enemy will go to the jets because he interviewed for two years ago and they, they picked Gase over him. I wouldn't oh. go back there. I'd be like, nah, you go, oh. go to hell. So I don't know who's going to get Phil first. And, and like you said, you can't talk to, they're probably going to go to the Super Bowl unless Buffalo takes him out, but you can't even talk to him for another month. So, I mean, that's kind of the other problem is the guys that are in the playoffs and the hot guys, you can't talk to hot guys. That sounds gay as hell. You can't, you can't talk to for another, you know, two, three weeks. So it's hard to say. I mean, the the top guys are really off limits for another three weeks. So how do you really fill it? Unless you go to college. That's why Harbaugh. That's also why I think yeah. Harbaugh and Urban Meyer and and the uh, uh, 49ers defensive coordinator are going to be some of the first guys off the list because mm-hmm. you're going to have full access to them. And yeah. they're going to have a swing at the best jobs right away. Early, yeah. So let's move on. Let's move on. We're right. talking about this now. Wild card weekend. Jason Any, Garrett. Anything surprise you for the wild card? You know what really surprised me, man? That whole mess at the Eagles last week. I know it's not the wild card, but yeah, okay, okay. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk I about mean, that. Th- I you mean, are... there's, a, there's a few things that's going on. You're so you get play- you're a former yeah. player. Explain explain why this is such a big deal. It's a big deal, I think, because it's threefold. All right. So 
Carson Wentz is making uh, what a million and a half dollars a week, and he's being a, a bitch and and you know because he got benched and doesn't even yeah. show up for the last game. That's one thing. Second thing is the Giants are over there like their magical season got ruined. The bitches are six and ten, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like shit. You're six and ten. Shut up. You know, oh. it's like they're all pissed off. And the third is I don't. I've never seen. Um, <laughs> you know, Jalen was having a rough game, but he's a winner. So you you don't you guys like that. You don't you wait till the till the bell goes off. I mean, if he's not throwing well, he'll run it. I mean, he's been a winner everywhere. And you take a guy that's never taken a snap and is just horrific and I, I just don't think your division rival or the nfl preseasons when you decide who the backup's going to be that dude's never going to start so why would you put him in the game just get him reps that's some youth football shit and the tank for you know you had the ninth pick to go to the sixth i don't know if there's if that's that big a difference because the eagles are probably going to miss like they always do anyway so no i've never seen anything like that and i think you lose the locker room at that point because it's not you know it's one thing if you you know if, if you tank in basketball there's five dudes out there. You know, you can get a Jordan change all this shit, or you get yeah. LeBron and change all this shit. Yeah. You Shaq. can't do that in football. There's 55, 60 guys. One guy isn't changing shit. I mean, look at Justin Herbert's about as good as you can get. And he got and his coach got fired and they had a losing season and they go to playoffs. So one guy isn't going to change anything. You know, it's going to be a two or three year process. So no, I think you lose the locker room as a coach at that point. Um you know the Wentz thing. I mean, just it's a it's a disaster there. It's it's a disaster, and and I think the players. I don't know how you go back in the locker room. So like, I want to get my backup some playing time <laughs> against our division rival. I mean, it's like, come on. Look, hey, look, look, I, and the is, word is this, and the other word is because I'm from Philly. Doug oh. Peterson and Ron Rivera are like best friends. They say he did that just to get Ron into the playoffs. Even if, even if everything you just said is true, who mm -hmm. cares? If you, don't, listen, exactly. if, you, if you put that eagle helmet on, you run out of the locker room. And you mad that he put this kid in in the second half of a lost season. So yet for for what? So you can do what? What were you going to do in the second half that would have got you a contract extension that you didn't already yeah, do no. before? Like, why is everybody so mad about this? The, and like I said, the, the, you, you talking about the crap at the Giants are mad because they didn't get it at six and ten. Come on, man. The, and here's the other part. Why would the NFL put that crap ass game, the only game that every dude in the country is watching, and it happened? If that happened in a one o'clock game, no we, one would care. We wouldn't even hear about this. Nobody would even said anything. But when it happens and you're the only one on stage, and I don't know why, with all the hot ass games that were going on that day, why the Eagles and the Giants were the primetime game. But I don't why know. in the hell is no one upset with what Jacksonville has done all season long? There's no reason why Mike Glennon should be playing starting quarterback. No. You've got Gardner Minshew on that roster, a young guy who you want to see what he's got. You know why? Because they tanking. Why have the Jets allowed Adam Gase to coach this team to the very end unless they were tanking? Mm -hmm. they, that roster got to the point where they all went, nah, nah, nah fuck this. We finna win some games. Fuck the management. Yeah. And that's what they did. So and the, other, and the other part is this. New York's – the biggest media center in the world. So everybody hears it. Everybody sees it. Everybody right. Watches. We so had, now, every, we'd only game in town for the Eagles game. Everybody's seen everybody watch it. Ain't nobody even seen Jacksonville play. So now everybody's mad and they said, Oh, Doug Peterson should be fired for what fire him. He'll have a job before the, the, the ink dries on you firing him. Like this is absurd. This go is to just the chargers. This is the New York media being able to, carry a story across the country because they're the New York media and everyone is based there. This is complete dog shit. Nobody cares that you went from the ninth pick to the sixth pick, from the ninth pick to the ninth pick. Yeah, and you ain't in playoffs and, the, and a six and ten team didn't get in. And the only no, thing is this. Right! It's like it's the same dudes that'll tell you over and over and over and over again the NFL's a business. Well, that was a business, business. move. That's, That's a business move. You didn't, you didn't agree with it? Then uh, tough shit. That's the but, business move of all business moves. They yeah. did it right in front of you. Everybody on national TV. So if you do, if you want to say NFL is a business and a, and a cutthroat business and everything else, then it, it cuts both ways, man. That's what you just saw. Don't tweet or don't talk about integrity. Don't go on television and talk about how, oh, guys are out there putting their life on the line. Yeah. Did you see what they do in Jacksonville? Did you see what the coach did the year that they drafted Andrew Luck? They literally got rid of a Hall of Fame, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. 
They got right. rid of him so that they could draft Andrew Luck. They And they did it before the season even started, okay? So it wasn't like when the Lions went on 16. They were just bad. They were bad. They didn't have any other options. <laughs> this is the dumbest conversation. I think this I, conversation is only happening in Philly and New York, though. I disagree because everyone is talking about this. It's trending on Twitter. Ex players are talking about this on on social media. So but, it's become it a story. I know, but because it's two of the biggest media markets and the marquee yes. game of the year, when there was five other marquee games, and they put the useless one as the marquee game. So this this was a bad this was a bad move by the NFL putting this game in prime time. I in all honesty, it was a bad move by Doug Peterson because they were probably going to lose that game regardless of who was quarterback. And if he did this for his buddy Chico to get in the playoffs. Well, who who cares? They're gonna get dog walked by the Bucks anyway. So what, what John? Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. I'm like, you're talking what about like difference does it make? <laughs> that's what I don't get, man. I'm like, you're both gonna get dog walked anyway. What is the difference? I mean, and just Joe, watching those teams play, they're horrible. Bro, Joe Judge, message to you real quick. Shut the hell up. Why yeah. are you whining like somebody did something to you? By the way, Joe Judge, you were six and ten, bro. How about you figure out a way to be 10 and six before you cry about not making the playoffs and probably one of the worst divisions in the in history, history of football this year. You're going to take Daniel up. Jones. You're going to say, Hey, we're six and 10. I got Daniel Jones and we're going to go take out Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. Shut <laughs> up, dude. You gave this passionate speech about how people on your staff have to tell their wife that they're going to celebrate her birthday in the off season. Yeah. So will they celebrate that divorce. Stop it. Like the, Football is not everything. You know what it was? They wanted that extra playoff check. That's what they wanted. Even if even if you did, okay, good. Win more games. Yeah, I think it works out better for them because now they can say forever, oh, we would have beat Tampa Bay. We were running. Oh, yeah. We were coming in our own. We would have oh. gone six and ten. We were coming in hot. We were yeah, coming in now hot. be like, no, nah, no. Nah, right. The damn Eagles. What's up with your boy, Chase Young, acting like he's going to take Tom Brady out with his five sacks on the year? Listen, that's what I'm talking about, Chase Young. Poke your chest out, young fella. Be a lion, okay? Be a lion. Because what – listen, this is what Chase Young knew about Tom Brady. Dude ain't even on the top 25 rookie Bruh. sack list in history. You going you gonna to be Bruh. like, go there. I'm coming for you. All right, well, you've been coming for every quarterback in the league in, in a thousand plays this year. You got five sacks. Bro, you flew, ain't that, you flew that hate to Miami and back for Chase Young. I'm so sorry <laughs> for you, okay? Chase Young finna be on Tom Brady. He doing the right thing. Speaking Man, of he ain't going to be on nothing. One thing we know about Tom Brady – and you cannot front on this. If you pressure him, he will throw the ball away. He's oh. easily rattled. He does not want to be hit. Man, Chase Young don't pressure anybody with that liquor store weed he got hanging out. Man, come wow. On. I can't wait to watch these five sacks. Yeah, I can, uh, five, yeah you you did in 17 Ten. games. Redskins, five sacks. Come, come, they play Saturday. Five sacks. And that's going to be 45 to 6. I think I think I think listen, dude. In all honesty, I think the Bucks are going to win that game, but by a couple points. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think Alex Smith's going to be great. I think the the Washington defense is going to be great. And again, Tampa Bay hasn't really played anybody toward the end of the season, so they've been basically cleaning it up with a uh, week three preseason games. So you didn't, you didn't they didn't play a tough team like the Eagles. Okay, shout out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, so give me some quick rundowns because we got a couple minutes left. Colts, Bills, winner, Bills. Ram, Rams, Seahawks, winner. Seahawks. Bucks, Redskins. Not even close. Not okay. even close. Sunday, Ravens, Titans. Who you got? Ooh, that's yeah. a tough one right there. Yeah. You know, that's going back, I don't even say it, but you know that Titans OC is getting like all this, like he's the shit. Man, you give me Derrick Henry and you can run 200 yards a game. I'll be the shit too because defense doesn't know what to do. Are we coming up? Are we sitting back? We're going backwards? I don't want to tackle him. No, it no opens, one wants to it opens the whole field up. That's a tough one. I don't even know on that one. Okay. We'll call that a toss up. Bear Saints. Come on, man. You go, I, I can't pick Mitch Trubisky over Drew Brees. Saints. Brown Steelers. Oh, Steelers are going to dog wash them. Okay. Well, Browns barely beat the Steelers' third team. And they're missing their head coach now. He's COVID. He got, he got to sit out of the game. So a special teams coordinator is going to be the head coach for that game. You're missing a Pro Bowl guard. You're missing a starting wide receiver. And we still got three or four more days. They might get more COVID. Fool, you went to pit with the guy who's now the offensive coordinator. Yeah, but he's just calling plays. He ain't the head guy. 
ain't the head guy. The head guy out, bro. I know. So they they elevated a special teams coordinator to the head guy. Because ain't nobody, ain't nobody doing that during the week for special teams. He got time. To stuff. That's true. But you're going to have to ask your boy Kaplan now. That's his roommate. Be like, what happened, man? What had happened was they put Anthony Lynn of Cleveland over your boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going right. to ask him why. Well, welcome back, Brown and Burt. We are going to keep this going. You'll probably hear this on the radio soon, sometime in mid January. Uh, Till next time, welcome back to Anvil to the show. Hot out for Miami. How was your trip, real quick? It was real good. You saw my you saw my timeline. Don't 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 front. Come on, come hopefully, on. Hopefully, I never see it like that again. Hopefully, I don't get the COVID when I was there. Oh, I lost oh my, my sense of smell. Oh, oh my god. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.